Welcome to this Tutor to You paper walkthrough video for AQA A-Level Sociology, looking at the 10 mark outline and explain theory questions that appear on paper one and paper three of the AQA A-Level specification. The 10 mark outline and explain questions appear on both paper one and paper three, and they're focused on either research methods, sociological theory, sociological debates, or a combination of these factors. These are different than the outline and explain questions that appear on paper two as they are more knowledge based and are focused on theory, methods or debates. A good response to an outline and explain question will have two extended paragraphs which each provide one clear way, reason or criticism that answers the question. Now this question gives no credit for evaluation of the points that are made you have to focus on showing very good knowledge to get to the eight to 10 level on these questions. You do not need to evaluate. If we look at a sample question, now here we're looking at structural theories. It says outline two ways structural theories can be argued to be limited in understanding contemporary society. As we've seen with other question types, there's usually a cause and an effect. In this, we're looking for knowledge of two different things instead. We're looking for knowledge of structural theories and we're also looking for knowledge of contemporary society. And we're trying to explain why structural theories aren't useful for studying contemporary society. Now, this may be part of a bigger debate on a 20 mark question. For example, it might suggest that social action theories are better than structural theories for understanding contemporary society, or it might do the opposite and suggest that structural theories are better than social action theories. But on a 10 marker, it's looking for you to show knowledge of one side of this debate. So here it's looking for us to outline two ways in which structural theories, that is functionalism, Marxism, feminism, can be argued to be limited in understanding contemporary society. So we need to identify some of the features of structural theories and then apply those to features of contemporary society. So if we look at some features of structural theories, well, functionalism is seen as being outdated. These operate as grand narratives. They, they try to come up with predictions about how human beings will behave. They overstate the importance of the agents of socialization so family, media, religion. Some sociologists will argue that class is dead. Now, this is not necessarily a feature of structural theories, but it is a criticism of structural theories is that they overemphasize things like class, gender, and ethnicity. Another criticism of structural theories is that some of the Marxist alternatives, for example, a revolution and a communist society never came to pass and that there is no one size fits all theory of everything, which some structural theories will suggest. Now we need to look at some of the features of contemporary society and see how we can make links between these features of structural theories and contemporary society. So in contemporary society, we have greater diversity. Now we may be able to apply this to the idea of a one size fits all theory, Individuals will have choice and not necessarily shaped by social institutions. And we can see this point here, the declining importance of social institutions, the decline of religion through things like secularization. There is greater fluidity in gender and social class, which means that it's difficult for these theories like Marxism and feminism to explain the greater diversity in society. The impacts of globalization on our society, which limits the role of structural theories as globalization promotes more choice, greater influences from other cultures. And the fact that we live in a media saturated society, which may mean that media has become the most dominant social institution and eroded norms and values that are passed on through things like family and education and religion. We're going to make some links between these two now just to demonstrate how we would set up our paragraphs. So we're going to pick here that structural theories are outdated 
And there are a couple of ways in which we could apply this to contemporary society. We've gone with using a specific example that functionalism was focused on the nuclear family. That in contemporary society, we have greater family diversity. That there are many ways to fulfill the functions of the family. It's not all down to a nuclear family with its instrumental and expressive roles. And that we have a wider range of families. So families of choice, step families, lone parent families. Structural theories often focus on the nuclear family as being the norm. Whereas in contemporary society, that is no longer the case. Our second way we're going to look at is they focus on a one size fits all theory. So, for example, Marxism looks at class division and will suggest that those in the proletariat will always be exploited by those in the bourgeoisie. Some sociologists have suggested class is dead. This is Pakulski and Waters. We've seen a decline of grand narratives. And people's identity is defined by many things, not just class. So we've developed on this one size fits all theory that tries to explain human behavior. And we've moved all the way through to suggesting that individuals are defined by many things, that their identity is formed from many different sources. So let's look at a sample response. We started here by looking at one way structural theories can be seen to be of limited importance is through theories such as functionalism being outdated and not reflecting the nature of contemporary society. We've clearly identified our way. We've used an example of how functionalism is outdated. Functionalists suggest the nuclear family is the best fit for modern society with males performing the instrumental role and females performing the expressive role. This, according to functionists, allows the family unit to meet the functional prerequisites of individuals in society. Notice that we're using very specific key terms. In contemporary society, there is a greater family diversity and the basic needs of families can be met through a range of different family types. So we're starting to show our knowledge of contemporary society as well as of structural theories. If we develop this a bit further, we've already talked about family diversity, but also now we're going to talk about the functionist idea of instrumental and expressive roles. They're not necessarily based on gender or performed separately in contemporary society, with many dual earner families having two people perform the instrumental role, whilst lone parent families often have one individual performing both roles. And this shows that the functionalist way of looking at the family is no longer adequate. Furthermore, individuals have greater choice over their relationships and do not rely solely upon blood relatives. Many adopt families of choice with friends, co-workers, roommates and even pets, demonstrating the outdated nature of structural ideas of family life. It's a good response. What we've done is we've identified that we have a lot of knowledge here of a specific part of contemporary society, family life. And we can do this on paper one or paper three. We're not tied down to focusing on, for example, on paper one, we're not tied down to talking about education. And on paper three, we're not tied down to talking about crime. We can apply our knowledge from other aspects of the specification. Our second response, a second way structural theories are limited in their understanding of contemporary theories is they adopt a one size fits all approach to studying society. And we're going to use an example. Marxists suggest that social class is a defining factor in the life chances of individuals. Yet in contemporary society, some sociologists have suggested that social class is of less importance. We've applied an example here. Postmodernists Bukulski and Waters suggest that class is dead, whilst Giddens argues that we've moved into a classless society where individualism is more important than collective ideas of social class. What you're demonstrating here is you're demonstrating really good knowledge of criticisms of the idea of social class being important, which is a key feature of a structuralist theory, Marxism. We can develop this a bit further. This change can be seen as being due to the decline of meta narratives as individuals look to make sense of the world through their own experiences rather than those of others. This is very much a feature of contemporary society. As a result, individuals draw their influences from a wider range of sources than their social class position. 
And now we've added a little bit more. The growth of media, particularly the internet, has meant that individuals define themselves through other means than their class position, their gender or their religious beliefs. And that structural theories that suggest agents of socialization control individuals are limited in explaining this phenomena. So what we've done is we've demonstrated a really good knowledge, not only of contemporary society, but structural theories and why structural theories are limited in studying contemporary society. And for our exam goal, we're going to focus on the idea that you can apply examples of theoretical points from anywhere across the specification to show your knowledge of sociological theory. It doesn't have to be limited to the other topic that is covered on the paper you're sitting. So on paper one, you don't have to use education theories. And on paper three, you don't have to use crime theories to answer this 10 mark question. You can use it from family, from beliefs, from stratification, from global development, from whichever topic area you are studying, you can apply your knowledge to the questions on paper one and paper three for this 10 marker. And the same goes for the 20 marker on paper three. That concludes this Tutor to You paper walkthrough video, looking at the 10 mark outline and explain theory questions on paper one and paper three of AQA A-Level Sociology. Thanks for watching.